While we have our equations on the board, let's take a look at the connection to hyperbolic trig functions. So particularly, Cauch and Cinch. If you've encountered these functions before without complex analysis, they're probably given to you defined as these equations right here. So the idea is gonna be there's a definite connection between these equations and the equations here for sine and cosine. So what do we do? So for Cauch, okay, note, I put IT into cosine. So where we had a theta here, I'm gonna put IT. So this becomes e to the minus t, this becomes e to the t, and then you know we've just reproduced this formula here. For cinch, same idea, we put in it where we had theta before, but now we divide the whole thing by i. So dividing by i is just gonna take out the i in the denominator, which guarantees that we'll have a real number when we crunch this down. Okay, if I put it in here, what do we get? e to the minus t minus e to the t, and then we have an i down in here getting hit with another i, so it's gonna multiply by a minus one, which switches the order. So we reproduce formula for cinch. From there, we have two ways to see the equation cos squared minus cinch squared is equal to one. So one way would be just to work out the difference between the squares of these two. Another way is just to use trig. Okay, if I have Cosine and square it, we're gonna square sine over i, which is gonna to turn to minus sine squared. So the difference is gonna be cosine squared plus sine squared, and that's gonna give me a one. Now, with that, note what's happening here. For cosine and sine, you let that range over all your numbers, you're gonna get a circle. If I take cosh and cinch, let them range over all numbers for t, what are we gonna get? That's gonna be the right branch of hyperbola, x squared minus y squared equals one. So that picture looks like this. So if you give me a t, I evaluate, take cosh for the x value, cinch for the y value, we're gonna get some point on this hyperbola here. Okay, next, derivatives. What happens if we take the derivative of cosh? Okay, well, by going through the original equation, you'll see that cinch comes out. And if I take the derivative of cinch, okay, we'll see that cosh comes out. So note, there's no signs on these. So these are actually a lot nicer to deal with with trig functions. No need to memorize where you put the sign. And you'll see if you take the derivative of any of these, either of these twice, you're gonna get solution for the differential equation, y double prime minus y is equal to zero. Okay, final thing would be the graphs of cosh and cinch. So note, we can get two specific points off of each of the functions if you put zero in for the equation. Okay, so cosh of zero is gonna be, okay, e to the zero is one. So we have one plus one over two, which gives me a one. So that'll give me a point there. And then for cinch of zero, you put in, okay, e to the zero minus e to the zero is one minus one. So we get a point at zero. So you can work out the graphing yourself. You know how to do the critical points, inflection points, increasing, decreasing, and concavity at this point. So I'll leave that as an exercise. One thing worth noting about these two graphs, okay, we have the differential equation, y double prime, okay, is equal to y. So that means if you look at the sine of the function, that's gonna be the same as the sine of the concavity, meaning if I'm above the x-axis where y is positive, I have to be concave up, okay? And that's definitely the case for Cauch. If Y is negative, meaning under the X axis, concavity is gonna have a negative sign, which means we're concave down. So you'll note, here we're concave up and we're above the axis, here we're concave down below the axis.